Welcome, esteemed viewers. This is our Noble Lineage presenting the second part of our featured interview with Pastor Jay Rosario and organist and Sunday school instructor Mr. Raymond Ruckel from the Seventh Day Adventist Church in California, USA. Last week we learned of the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh Day Adventist Church and its universal principles for physical and mental health. On today's show, we will discover about the biblical diet ordained by God, which is referenced in both the Old Testament and New Testament texts of the Bible. In Genesis 1, it says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. I don't see anything about um, any flesh foods there. The essence of vegetarianism is a respect to God's creation and uh, is really following the dietary plan that God gave us. The essence of meat eating is death. Uh, there, there's a death involved. And that's contrary to the, to the original plan that God had in mind. And it's, it's a promoting what life is all about. So that's one way of looking at it, is the fact that um, God is a promoter of life, and um, when, when you consider uh, all of the countless uh, animals that have been many times tortured, uh, many times treated very uh, unpleasantly, and, they're, and, they're, and they're, 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 they're just fed all kinds of strange things for the benefit of you know, the market, for the benefit of just sales, it could do a lot of, it, not only is it harmful for the animal, but it's harmful for those that consume the animal. So these are contrary to the, the Christian philosophy of, of living in life. Other than God's original plan for humans' diet in the Old Testament, what is the indication in the New Testament to support this? Let us consider the following story about St. Peter's dietary choice as recorded in the New Testament. The New Testament is filled with many different concepts, concepts of healthy living. I just want to just chime in here, if I may. Sure. Um, the uh, Apostle Peter um, is, is a prominent apostle, you know. And one of the things that was interesting is that years after Jesus had had been resurrected and, and after the uh, days that he was with them for 40 days and then he was uh, taken to heaven. Well, there were several years that went by. And listen to what happened to Peter. One time the Lord thought he would shake him up a little bit <clears throat> by uh, showing him in vision. He was up on the top of a house. And the sheet came down and it had all kinds of animals. It says four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. But listen to what Peter's response was. Because the voice said to him, and this happened three times, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. And he's scratching his head thinking, well, here's what he says. Not so, Lord. He's speaking to the Lord. For nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. He's a New Testament Christian. Well, what was their Bible? Their Bible was the Old Testament. Mm. And, and, and so he was, he was living according to those same principles. Ellen G. White, the founder and the prophetess of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the 19th century, conveyed the same message as the Bible does. Upon receiving the divine revelation, she called on people to return to the wholesome and delicious food given to man in the beginning, and teach children to practice mercy toward the voiceless creatures of God. In her article, Flesh as Food, published in the book The Ministry of Healing, the lines read, Often animals are taken to market and sold for food when they are so diseased that their owners fear to keep them longer. And some of the processes of fattening them for market produce disease. Now this is a hundred, hundred and some years ago. Shut away from the light and pure air, breathing the atmosphere of filthy stables, perhaps fattening on decaying food, the entire body soon becomes contaminated with foul matter. Animals are often transported long distances and subjected to great suffering in reaching a market. Taken from the green pastures and traveling for weary miles over the hot, dusty roads or crowded into filthy cars, referring to ca uh, cattle cars, you know, on, behind a train. Feverish and exhausted, often for many hours deprived of food and water, the poor creatures are driven to their death. 
that human beings may feast on the carcasses. And then as she goes on uh, up here, the intelligence, this is page 315, the intelligence displayed by many dumb animals approaches so closely to human intelligence that it is a mystery. The animals see and hear and love and fear and suffer. They use their organs far more faithfully than many human beings use theirs. They manifest sympathy and tenderness toward their companions in suffering. Many animals show an affection for those who have charge of them, far superior to the affection shown by some of the human race. They form attachments for man which are not broken without great suffering to them. And here's, I'll finish with this paragraph. What man with a human heart who has ever cared for domestic animals could look into their eyes so full of confidence and affection and willingly give them over to the butcher's knife? How could he devour their flesh as a sweet morsel? And it goes on. Um, uh, you know, she's basically... Uh, saying it's just unwholesome to, to be having flesh as food. When we return to our noble lineage, we will learn more about the biblical vegetarian diet practiced and advocated by the Seventh-day Adventists. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our noble lineage on Supreme Master Television. In today's show, we are very honored to have Pastor Jay Rosario and organist and teacher, Mr. Raymond Ruckel, talking about the biblical diet, which is compassionate, healthy, and environmentally friendly. In the letter to Dr. John Harvey Kellogg in 1898, Ellen White, the prophetess of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, mentioned her inner vision in which there will come a time when God commands people to stop eating animal products, including even dairy. The letter is compiled in the book called Manuscript Releases, Volume 18. What I thought was kind of interesting here, the Lord will bring His people into a position where they will not touch nor taste the flesh of dead animals. Then let not these things be prescribed by any physician who has a knowledge of the truth for this time. There is no safety in eating the flesh of dead animals, and in a short time, the milk of the cow will also be excluded from the diet of God's commandment-keeping people. In a short time, it will not be safe to use anything that comes from the animal creation. Those who take God at His word and obey His commandments with the whole heart will be blessed. He will be their shield of protection. But the Lord will not be trifled with, and I just have one more sentence, distrust, disobedience, and alienation from God's will and way will place the sinner in a position where the Lord cannot give him his divine favor. Although the planet's situation is unfavorable in many respects, with so many earthquakes, extreme weather events, and fast depleting food and water, the Seventh-day Adventists firmly believe that there is hope. In the near future, we will have a vegetarian new earth as God promised. One of the biggest things that we need to consider is the fact that maybe God is wanting us to be saved because He has a new planet for us. That in this planet, we don't have death. We don't have crying. We don't have sorrow. We don't have pain which these are the very things that we have in this planet. And God is trying to prepare us for that planet. The original plan was no meat. And we read, of course, in Revelation 21, uh, considering the, the problems with the environment, the problems with the climate, the problems with this planet, God is going to solve all that by giving us a new planet. And in this new planet, the Bible says there will be no more death. And if there will be no more death, then that basically means that animals will not die. And of course, there's even a verse in Isaiah that says that, that the wolf and the lamb will dwell together. Not only will humans not eat animals, not only will animals not eat humans, which that's something that we see even here, 
but even animals will not eat each other, which I think is fascinating. To be qualified to live on the new earth, one should live a righteous lifestyle in accordance to God's commands. Even though um, in the not so distant future we will be living in a plant-based diet world, it's the best to incorporate all of the things of that world in this world. And I think that's, what, that's the idea, is to be promoters of life, to be healthy, to have longevity of life, but not only longevity of life, quality of life. Pastor Jay Rosario also gives some useful advice for new vegetarians to have a smooth transition in adopting the noble biblical diet. Find some information online about the benefits of veganism and vegetarianism. Um, there's a lot of healthy um, things that you can find. Uh, of course, we've mentioned a few from the writings of Ellen G. White, which are excellent. Uh, get, get some cookbooks, some vegan, vegetarian cookbooks. Sometimes there's, a, there's a substitutes for certain things. We're like, wow, how do, we, how do I leave, leave this out for my recipe? What do I do? You would be surprised how many other creative substitutes there are to replenish those things that maybe we need to leave behind because of health reasons. So it's not impossible. It is not impossible to adopt vegetarian and veganism. It's just getting the right resources. The Seventh-day Adventist Church also provides some classes to help people to live a more wholesome life, as it is the life God designed for us. Uh, we host vegetarian cooking class, and we, we, we also do stop smoking programs, things that are, that are needs. But uh, one of the areas, partic particularly in this part of, of the world here in California, there's a, there's a huge interest in, in the, that kind of a lifestyle. So uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, one of our signatures is the health events, uh, aside from the medical institutions, hospitals all over the world. As a Seventh-day Adventist, I, I would just like to say to those that are viewing to take into consideration the decisions that you make in your lifestyle. Remember the words of um, Jesus in John 10 where he says, I have come that they might have life and that might have it more abundantly. Once again, we just want to thank Supreme uh, Master TV. Our heartfelt gratitude, Pastor Jay Rosario and Mr. Raymond Ruckel of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, for your noble efforts in spreading the way of divine compassion and blessing. Thank you, pure-hearted viewers, for your gracious presence on today's program. Please now join us for Between Master and Disciples coming up next. May your days be graced with God's protection and light. Please visit losgatos.adventistfaith.org for more information on the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Los Gatos, California, USA. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash nl.